Well, in many respects, he's a promoter's dream. Kevin Trailblazer Holland sometimes flaps the gums a little bit and maybe says some things that the UFC doesn't like, but this guy is a soldier, a promotional workhorse, always answers the bell, and not just answers the bell, but always shows up in fine fettle, always in good shape, always ready to perform. His strength of schedule rivals any fighter in the UFC's middleweight or light heavyweight division. And if Kevin Holland can fight on instinct, stay true to himself, not play his opponent's game, the guy could be a world champion one day. Easier said than done. ready to battle as he tries to take home the title. All right, so the path to UFC middleweight gold and glory continues to go through this man. And without speaking hyperbolically, I do believe this man looks like he could reign for some time. You know, when you think about middleweight, you think about some great champions, Anderson Silva and Israel Adesanya. This man can be viewed in the same regard because he has ruled the top of the division for a really long time. He's ruled it with an iron fist. He is just so good in this role. He is everything you want in the UFC champion. And he's fighting in his natural weight class. A lot of people wondered aloud if maybe he could become a two division champion, go down to 70. He don't want to hear that noise. He's looking to pluck off another middleweight title challenger in yet another big spot here tonight. Well, it is the venue in which every UFC athlete hopes to one day compete. And we are now ready to go from Madison Square Garden here in New York City. All right, now our tale of the tape for this middleweight championship fight. Here's Bruce Buffett. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the main event of the evening. <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, presenting the challenger, Gavin the Trailblazer Holland. And now, introducing the champion, fighting out of the red corner, presenting the reigning, defending UFC undisputed middleweight champion of the world. Herbert Dean's in the building. He's the third man in the octagon tonight. All right, here's Kevin Holland. No denying the fan base, no denying the skill set he has said of this particular matchup. I'm just going to see where the fight plays out. If it grapples, so be it. If it's a wrestling match, I'm ready to go there. Kevin Holland believes over the last several years he has found the right weight class, he has rounded out his skill set, and he is comfortable wherever a mixed martial arts contest goes, including this particular matchup here tonight. Roundhouse kick lands. All right, so there it is. We expected a lot of takedown attempts early from the more well-rounded fighter. The kickboxer stays upright, and amazing to see the progression of his takedown defense relative to his UFC debut. Well, when he first got here, he was just a kickboxer, but this is not glory. This is not you being able to stand and just throw. You've got to be able to defend your legs, and he showed that he is a martial artist now, not just a kickboxer. Ooh, big shot land. Block that punch. Just over three minutes to go in our first round. The lead take gets hit with a kick. Nice shot there by the champ. Submission. 
transition defense wins this transition. Just because he got taken down doesn't mean he ain't gonna punch. Lands a beautiful strike from the bottom. Nice defense. All right, he's got the full mount now. Is this one of the most dominant positions in MMA? Is that fair to say? It's a very dominant position. It's one of the most ideal positions you can get to, especially if you are fighting someone that doesn't truly understand that they're not in as much danger as they are. Because it's dangerous. But there are a lot of outs, and if a person isn't very understanding of that, then you can really, really put some damage on them. It might be a submission attempt here, Chance. I mean, you cannot sit in a full guard. When you sit in a full guard, you give these guys so many opportunities. Well, he grounded him, and now he's trying to pound him out. Great ground strikes here. Oh, and there's another ground strike for good measure. Well, the ground and pound has been working for him. Nice job here by Delidze. Seconds winding down in the opening round. He Bottom needs fighter to better move. Yeah, he's got to move. Oh. He's got to shrimp oh. and try to either get up or pull his opponent back into him so he doesn't have the posture to land that big damage. All right, let's take a look back at some of the replays from that last round. Unbelievable to see these high-level competitors get in each other's face, tuck their chin, bite down on the mouth guard, and just let it all hang out over the course of five minutes. You ready to fight? You ready? Second round underway. Heavy kick downstairs. Oh, head kick attempt. It is blocked by Roman Delitze. Back to the overhand now. That one's good. Just out of range with that right hand. Oh, really exploiting his reach advantage as he landed the jab there, DC. Trying to go to the body now with the kick. That one misses. Oh, man, that kick looked like it hurt. Oh, beautifully timed and placed hook by him there, DC. Beautiful placement on the hook. Way to turn his body into it, make sure he kept his eyes on his opponent. Hurts him and gets back to center. Delizze's got a bruise appearing on that left side now. Got to think that bodily investment is going to pay dividends later in the fight. Oh, got to keep pressing here. Lidze going for the leg kick, he misses. Oh, nice straight. That'll work. When he gets the point, oh, oh, he hurt him again, bro. Let's get some points. All right, well, good news is he rocked him. Bad news is he wasn't able to finish the job, and now his opponent's back in the fight. I mean, you don't get those opportunities very often. You got to take full advantage of them when they're presented to you. Well, his corner was pretty urgent after round one. A little bit lackluster there in that opening round. He has certainly picked up the pace here, and as a result, he has taken control of this second round. Heavy leather landed on both sides in that exchange. Oh, spinning back fist! All right, so some definite damage underneath the elbow now on the side of his opponent. A lot of strikes to the body starting to, start to add up. Yeah, a lot of strikes to the body and mixing up the attack, not being one-dimensional, not head-hurting inside the octagon. I, I think he's fought beautifully right now. He's starting to show itself. Right to the knee on belly. 
seconds winding down in round two. Oh, he's got the Kamura position locked in now. Oh, and there's the horn at the end of the round. How about this fight, folks? You see, he was nearly caught in a submission there right at the end of the round, saved by the bell. So back to the stool, mentally probably not in a great place here. We'll see if he can recover and get himself back into this fight. All right, a lot of tremendous striking action in that last round, DC. I know you don't have a Telestrator, but take us through the replay. I mean, I would love to have my Telestrator right now. That was a great display of high-level mixed martial arts striking. Both combatants stood toe-to-toe -to -toe and let it all hang out. You ready to fight? You ready? Here we go, third round of this championship fight. All right, next round is now underway. Do you see any major takeaways after the previous five minutes? That both of these guys are very evenly matched. The matchmakers did a fantastic job when they put these two in the octagon. So even though it wasn't crazy, you got to see high level mixed martial arts. Man, these guys have some chins on them. Huge shots being landed on both sides. Missed with that attempt. Well, he hasn't really showed any signs of slowing down tonight. He continues to connect on a high volume of strikes here. Good punch, Lance. He's doing a great job fighting behind the reach and dictating where the fight takes place. I mean, he's cutting them down to size with these beautiful leg kicks. Yeah, he's got to. He's got to start checking kicks. Delente gets tagged with a kick now. Let's see if he can rally. Now lands a kick to the body. Oh, guillotine, guillotine here. Top pressure being applied here. Great submission defense on display tonight. <laughs> Moving his head pretty well defensively on the ground here. All right, north south position now. We'll see how he chooses to proceed. The Lindsay gets back up. Defense there, huge block for him. What a beautiful uppercut. It landed beautifully. Perfect placement on that shot. Forty-five seconds remain in the round. Trying to establish that jab once again. Well, he has really started to apply a lot of pressure here down the stretch. Not as much offense earlier in the fight. He is making up for lost time now. Trying to kick the leg out. Right on the button. Another big shot to the head. All right, that's three rounds in the books. We are headed to the championship rounds. It's okay. It's a fight. You're supposed to be tired. This next round. All right, so we now look back at some of the action from that previous round, DC. A lot of good highlights on both sides. I mean, a lot of good highlights from both competitors. They both should be very proud of what they accomplished. But I'm telling you, man, I'm not sure they can keep this up. If they land at this clip for another five minutes, somebody's going to sleep. You ready to fight? Ready. We have arrived at the fourth round fight schedule for five five-minute rounds. All right, here we go, fourth round of a... I'm not sure how he stayed upright. I mean, when you get hit with a shot like that, to stay standing shows and talk to your toughness. Oh, 
he lands another strike to the body here. Really starting to connect on a lot of strikes to the midsection here in the latter stages of this fight. So the uppercuts have been a big part of the storyline in this one, but the setups have really been key for him. He's not telegraphing that strike, and the opponent hasn't been able to adjust. He has not been able to see them. It's a very tricky punch, especially in the man who has a great double leg. My goodness, he has a, a great double leg. Continuing to stay busy here on the ground. attack that arm triangle on the opposite side. When it's time to finish, he will lock his hands, pass his body all the way to the opposite side, drop his chest to get all the way down to the opponent's neck to try to choke him out and finish his fight. Outstanding pressure from top position here by Delitze. Now he's going full on. Just over two minutes now to go. Posturing up now. And now the damage is about to start. Well, he's got his back now. Delizze is in half court. Most fighters will tell you offensive wrestling is the hardest, most exhausting thing. Especially if you're just running the guy over, John, and then he just gets up. Well, you know, I don't like the gi very much, but I have an appreciation and a healthy one for these type of transitions. You can tell he's been in a gi at some point in his life with the way that he moves so freely. I'm skipping jujitsu next week, too. <laughs> While well, the ground and pound is there once again, strong work here by Delitze. Oh, compromising spot here. Triangle choke is locked in. Oh, he got out. 20 down, 5 to go. All right, so there's the end of the round. Big story in this one now. The cut on the bridge of that nose from that strike. The cut man is in there. Should be able to shut this one and potentially prevent it from being a factor here moving forward. All right, so there's the end of the round, and the tide has officially turned a huge head strike to stun his opponent. We'll see which corner can adjust here moving forward. I mean, they've got to be celebrating. They've got to be happy. Everything's working. But the other side has to be concerned. They have to figure something out, make some sort of adjustment to try to change the tide of this fight. Ready to fight? Ready. We have arrived at this fifth and final round. Nice. Oh my goodness, huh? That's it. Oh my God. Yeah, that was just a gorgeous shot to end the fight right there. I'm not even sure the opponent really saw it coming. So back to the drawing board for him. But for the winner, this is certainly exactly what he was looking for here tonight. We go to Bruce Buffer for the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean is called to stop to this contest at 14 seconds of round number five. We're playing the winner by knockout and still the undisputed USC middleweight champion of the world. All right, so off the record, you'd like the champion to get it done tonight, and that is how it played out, and still UFC middleweight champion.